Hello guys, welcome to Amiya Meets. Today I have with me uh, somebody I've known for years, especially online, and finally I get to meet him in person for uh, this interview. We'll be right back, stick and stay. Make sure you subscribe to our channel uh, by hitting the button down below. Welcome back. So my guest for today is Jabril Masare. How do you pronounce his name? Mansare. Mansare. Good. Jabril, welcome. Charlie, thank you. I see you are back in town. How long has it been since you, you, you've you been away? I've been away for 17 years. 17 years. Yeah, since uh, 2001-ish. Wow. Yeah. That's a long time. Charlie, a lot has changed. <laughs> what was the one biggest thing that has changed for you coming back? Ah, oh, wow. I mean, the country, the the... The development infrastructure, you know, physically, mm -hmm. um, has changed a lot. Um, that's that's the one thing that sticks out because when mm -hmm. you look at the age difference, mm -hmm. 20 mm -hmm. years ago I was, mm -hmm. you know, 21, 22. So mm -hmm. now you're seeing all these buildings that mm -hmm. you didn't see before. before. You're seeing KFC. You're seeing all these brands. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it's food, whether it's even the presence of Ghanaian manufactured mm -hmm. uh, products. You know, there's a there's a huge emergence. It's, it's a different country. Mm -hmm. It's a different country. I mean, you've been in the U.S. for a very long time. Yeah. What was it that kept you away from your home country for that long? Um, I have to say work. A lot of it is work and not just work like the boring sound of the word work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? I've always been very passionate about everything I do. Um, so I put a lot of passion into my business. Um, I've run a Nissan dealership in New Jersey, uh, the lead of the sales team. Uh, I've been in finance um, and I've been very, very passionate about that. Um, I started with Mitsubishi in about 2005 in Mississippi when I was in university studying for my economics degree. Uh, then I left Mississippi around that time. I was also very passionate about music. So um, I went to Killeen, Texas hooked up with One Love. We started a group called The Rapscallions and we started recording. Uh, he left in 2006 to come back to Ghana to continue his music career, which he's done exceptionally well. Um, I moved on from the South to the East Coast uh, to work with a producer called QC Funk in New Jersey mm -hmm. and also on the, on the, to, to further my economics degree. So I transferred from Alcon State University to um, New Jersey University and then somewhere in between the course of that degree I also moved from Mitsubishi to Nissan and the work atmosphere of the car industry in, in America is very intense. Mm -hmm. We work 9 to 9, Monday to Saturday, you have Sunday off and another odd day in the week so there wasn't enough time to fully balance the degree mm -hmm. music and music and you know so i kind of found a way and also balance coming back thinking of you mm -hmm. know coming back mm -hmm. home mm -hmm. um and then there was also the immigration um situation that i had found myself in having gone through the schooling system having lived in the united states for so long you know, I had to now figure out, okay, how do I nat naturalize? Mm -hmm. You know, so in the process of figuring out my naturalization and in the process of figuring out, you know, my, my finance career mm -hmm. and my music career, you know, I get picked up by Homeland Security and spend a year in prison. Mm. So now here comes a year, which is a big gap and missing in my whole life, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. But um, alhamdulillah, God being so great, that year I was able to reconnect with Islam. You know, so out of some of the worst things in, in your life comes the best things, you know. And so with that reconnection, I came out a much alert, more aware, say no to drugs, because I was very, very involved in marijuana. I mean, anybody who went to school with me knows I got kicked out of from mm -hmm. a couple of schools for <laughs> for that. Um, so, you know, I came out with, with a lot of, with, aware of a lot of things and, and my environment, you know, more aware of my environment. Mm -hmm. And so I used that energy to push everything I did. 
you know. And so I met um, one of my mentors, Daruba Bin Walhad, and um, Joseph Jazz Hayden, two of my, my mentors, and, you know, kind of followed their lead, being an activist and, and being disciplined in Islam and being disciplined in music, you know, and, and with work. You know, so then I moved from Jersey City to Brooklyn, where I recorded, you know, a single with Dead Prez, M1 of Dead Prez, which Streets of Africa became quite uh, known across the globe and in New York. Um, and then did a single with uh, Reggie Rockstone, Take Your Life from Ghana. Shout out to Reggie. <laughs> you know, he actually introduced me to um, Daruba and, and, and who introduced me to jazz, Joseph Hayden. Um, then I also started doing collaborations. I did one with Black Prophet called Righteous Gangster. Did one with um, Blitz the Ambassador mm -hmm. called Ghetto Youths. Did one with Mensa and Manifest called Make Money, Give Me That Dollar. You know, released my first uh, project called The Foreigner, you know, which had all these collaborations on them. Mm -hmm. And simultaneously, I started working my way up through in the finance you know, department, bringing teams together, you know, getting training, uh, being the floor management and sales. So I have a very strong business background with Nissan in, um, in a town called Edison, New Jersey. Uh, another mentor of mine, Mr. Joe Gore, and another brother of mine, Christian, we both built a very solid uh, team. So fast forward a few years after that, um, coming out of immigration detention, mm -hmm. now I'm in this bubble called supervision. So I have to report to my immigration officer, mm -hmm. i.e. my deportation officer, mm -hmm. every, uh, every, first it was once a year, mm -hmm. you know, then it became twice a year, you know, and then Trump came into power and mm -hmm. it became every two months, mm -hmm. oh, <laughs> you know. So one day I was, I was at my supervision, with my supervision officer and, you know, I get a phone call. Well, earlier in the morning I got a phone call. And it was from my family in Ghana that I, my father had just passed, you know. And so that news triggered a whole different phase of my life. Mm -hmm. You know, my father, the late Mr. Mohammed Lamine Mansouri, peace be unto his name, um, passed in 2017. So I knew that uh, the homecoming was around yeah. the corner. Mm -hmm. You know, I wasn't able to make arrangements to, to, to come for his funeral, which was held in Sierra Leone, where, we're, where he's from and buried. So I started making arrangements to come from there henceforth, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know. So trying to figure out what worked for the dealership, mm -hmm. which I had been a huge, played a huge role in, um, and what worked with immigration, which were tr helping me naturalize mm -hmm. now. Um, and then what helped for myself, because with Trump being in power, I'm watching the news every day and seeing people being deported. Mm -hmm. Mind you, the first time they came, they came to me at work mm -hmm. and picked me up from work. So it's like every day now I'm driving to work like it right here. So is this, <laughs> Could this be my last day, day you know? Yeah. Uh -huh. And do I want to spend another year in prison if I that. do get mm -hmm. picked up in case mm -hmm. they don't help me naturalize? Mm -hmm. Because now I've been in the States for 17 years. Yeah. Like, you know, certain things come with the time, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know. Um, so I'm trying to figure that out. And now before I notice my father's first year anniversary, so okay. can pass. So this is 2018. He passed in April of 2017. Mm -hmm. So it's 2018 and the first anniversary and you know my sisters at this point are very active mm -hmm. in in his in his estate, mm -hmm. you know, and they're having a hard time because we didn't grow up in Freetown, yeah. and most of you know his his testament, his will was lodged in Freetown, mm -hmm. you know. So going back and forth with my sisters and seeing the difficulties they they're they were through. going through, communicating with the family in Freetown, you know, I could see that yeah, the time is coming, mm -hmm. you know. So it was one day where I was with my immigrant deportation mm -hmm. officer and you know, we were having the interview and he's looking through my folder and he's like, ah, dude, you've been here for 17 years. 
you know, you're married to an American woman. Um, you seem to be stuck in this bubble. Mm -hmm. Why don't you just let us transfer your case to the embassy in Ghana? Mm -hmm. You go home, go interview, and come back. Mm -hmm. This whole thing will take you less than six months rather than not knowing what to do, what to do yeah. or, you know, not knowing. Because, you know, like any government agency, when your folder is in their hands, there's no urgency, not because you're not special, mm -hmm. but because of the amount of rooms or mm -hmm. folders that they have, yeah. you know. So the best way to expedite your situation is to put yourself in a department where there are less folders, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know. And his advice to me was, yo, you know, Ghana mm -hmm. has less immigration <laughs> cases than we do here in America. Mm -hmm. So let's give you a recommendation. Take this letter, go back home. ASAP because you don't want us to come and pick but you up yeah. again mm -hmm. and your, your process will be much more easier yeah. Charlie that day no I booked the ticket <laughs> <laughs> that day good, good, I go good. house with Charlie I say ah one way flight sir. forget good, about good. the return good, good. I booked the ticket lucky enough that was getting to November of 2018 mm -hmm. so now the time the next anniversary sure. death anniversary of april mm -hmm. you know so i call up ghana you know at the time my mom was in canada because mm -hmm. you know my sisters live between canada and england and i'm like yo i'm coming to ghana she's like i'm not there i was like i'll be my father's house is there mm -hmm. you know when i get to ghana i'll call the house and they'll yeah. send a driver she's like hey are you sure you haven't been there oh. mm -hmm. i say ah say me papa fear no 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 problem land in ghana call the house Call the, the his caretaker now, mm -hmm. you know, house girl. Then he passed, mm -hmm. you know, so she's taking care of the property. Oh, you know, one hour the driver is coming, two hours the driver is coming, three hours the driver is coming. I say, oh, she, what's going on? Mm -hmm. You know, so me now nah, make my own move. Good day, my cousin in there. A week, the woman is not picking up the phone. Second week, the woman is not picking up the phone. So I go to WhatsApp, madam, what's going on? Oh, I'm in Kumasi. I says, well, you could have okay, told me, yeah, yeah. you know, I'm coming back next week, then we will meet. I said, well, what's meet, meet for what? Like, where's the house keys? Mm -hmm. Where's the driver? Like, where's, mm -hmm. you know, why am I, why do I feel like I'm on the outside? Yeah. She goes, oh, um, I'll explain everything to you when, when we meet. Mm -hmm. I says, no problem. Then, a week or so later, my big brother calls me. He says, hey. Do you see what's going on? I says, what? He's like, I'm looking at a uh, little pamphlet here, a real estate pamphlet. Mm -hmm. And daddy's house is for sale. Mm -hmm. I said, for sale? What are you talking about? He said, the thing is in the pamphlet. Real estate agents have come to pitch the house to my boss. Mm -hmm. I says, okay, let me do what I think any common person will do. Mm -hmm. I said, not common, any reasonable person will do. You know, a friend of mine says, yo, let's go grab some uh, spray cans and let's go and spray the wall that the yeah, property is not for sale. By Jibro Mansare, put your phone number on there. Mm -hmm. I do that, the next morning, airport police. Ring, ring, Mr. Mansare, oh, please, you have to come to the police station, you're mm -hmm. under arrest. I said, under arrest? Mm -hmm. What have I done? You vandalized somebody's property. Sure. I said, hey, I'll be right there, I beg. <laughs> <laughs> I've already spent a year in prison in mm -hmm. America. It ain't gonna happen in Ghana. Mm -hmm. You know, so I rush over to the airport police station and meet a very nice gentleman called Inspector Ahmed. Mm -hmm. Ahmed goes, um, yeah, we have to arrest you. I said, so what's the process? He's like, well, you need to put up property for your bill. <laughs> I said, well, that's the property you're arresting me over. He says, oh no, this property belongs to Hajia Mamfatu Mane. I'm like, who is that? Mm -hmm. He's like the person that made the complaint, the owner mm -hmm. of the house. I says, this doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. So I reach out to the caretaker. Like, do you know so, 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 and so mm -hmm. that has lodged a complaint? She says, it's me. You've come to vandalize my house. I says, your house, what's going on, um, Hajia? She says, oh, your father and I got married whilst you were in America. Mm -hmm. And this is my matrimonial home, and there's no place for you in this house. Mm -hmm. I says, oh, now things are beginning to make sense to me. So I say, Inspector, I beg, give me one second, eh? 
I call my godmother, Miss Jennifer Brown Eye, Dr. Jennifer Brown Eye. I said, Jennifer, I'm sitting at the uh, airport. They're arresting me because I'm trying to gain access to my father's house. And because I vandalized the wall, she says, what rubbish. She comes there. We take Inspector Ahmed to her house in Cantonment. Sees the property, says, oh, this, the garden alone is enough for, you know, his bill. Madam, it's, we, we apologize. She says, no, we have to do this the right way. Mm -hmm. let's, let's document everything yeah. formally. So she comes back with, to me, with me to the um, police station and I'm released on bail with her property as my collateral. Mm -hmm. Now, we say, bring Hajia Mamfatu to the police station mm -hmm. to show us her documents, ownership of the house. Mm -hmm. No problem. I call my sisters, I'm like, yo girls, what, what am I? <laughs> I'm missing something here. I don't know what it is, but somebody needs to. They say, eh, Jabril, anyway, we knew we didn't know how to tell you because of your anger. So, you know, uh, actually, when we came back from Sierra Leone after burying dad, Mam Fatu asked for um, the uh, Sharia law says that she's entitled to a uh, eight or a quarter of his property. And when we asked her why, she said they got married in, the, in Kumasi. Mm -hmm. I said, Kumasi, my daddy is from Sierra Leone. Mm -hmm. I said, where's the marriage certificate? Oh, Amida's like, I have a, I took a photo, a picture of it. So then she sends it to me. And I mean, Amel, you see this thing, it's a joke. Mm -hmm. The certificate, anybody, I mean, there's a big coat of arms. First of all, Ghana coat of arms on mm -hmm. a marriage certificate that's <laughs> supposed to come from a mosque. Pachu! Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what's the coat of arms? What does that have to do with it's a marital uh, thing? Why isn't it from a ministry of, mm -hmm. you know, whatever, if anything? So I'm like, whatever. Then I go back. I look at the, the, the documents. You look at the, um, you look at the diary amount, 5,000 Ghana cities. You look at the date of the marriage, 2006. Ghana city started in 2007. Before it was just CDs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I'm like, oh, okay. what's going on here? Then you look at bride, my father's signature is there. Groom, the woman has signed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah. I mean, this document looks very, very, very funny. <laughs> so we have a meeting. Hajia comes with her lawyer with the document with the supposed marriage mm -hmm. certificate and i tell to the inspectors that i i suspect this document to be fraud um they're like well on what grounds do you suspect the documents i says first of all i'm still on bail from this arrest mm -hmm. so give me permission to leave the country let me go to sierra leone let me go to the courthouses there and find out whether my father died and left a will mm -hmm. or not. And if he didn't, let's find out how the Sierra Leonean government, since he's a citizen of Sierra Leone, disperses mm -hmm. the, the property when somebody dies into state in Freetown. This is no problem, you have two weeks. I buy my flight, go to Sierra Leone. There is a different wahala <laughs> waiting for me there <laughs> but me nah, you know i think move i think very wisely i said if wahala de ghana <laughs> by all means you know peter go follow paul go yeah. sierra leone so i went there without even telling the family i went straight to the courthouse you know we went through their process you no know, folders and folders and folders and buying the will they did alhamdulillah the man wrote a pamphlet not even a will by Islamic law and by his own mm -hmm. will. So all the match. So I bring the book. You know, we'll yeah. talk about the Wahala then later. <laughs> let's, let's focus on Ghana. So I bring the book where I come back to Ghana. I, I uh, sealed the will in Sierra Leone, registered mm -hmm. it there, came to Ghana, sealed it here, resealed it, and went to the police station. Say, okay, now you see that address there in uh, East Airport, here, mm -hmm. point three A B C. Mm -hmm. The will says that my property here says here's so and so goes to Mr. Jabril Mansari. Here's mm -hmm. my passport. Thank you very much. Can mm -hmm. you drop this okay. and free my auntie's mansion mm -hmm. <laughs> in Cantonments for her? No problem. Inspector Ahmed was like, "Wow, God has blessed you with some very good property. We respect it." Then I move 
to Inspector Asiedu, who is the, the head of East Airport Police Station. He says, Asiedu, this is my father's will. This is my father's signatures on the will and on his passport. And here's the marriage certificate that I'm questioning. How can we move forward? Mm -hmm. He says, this is a clear fraud case. Inspector Thompson, who is one of the, I mean, he's my hero. <laughs> Now. Yeah, right now he's my hero and, and to be quite honest, I have to recommend the Ghana police force or if, 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 I can, if I can break it down to that police station, you know, um, they, zero tolerance, you know, Inspector Thompson jumped on this case, looked at the marriage certificate, he said, oh, Kumasi, Jabril, pack your bags, let's go, STC, went to Kumasi, went to... Uh, three different villages looking for the mosque. The mosque know they exist. Mm -hmm. Finally found the P.O. box that the mosque is registered under. Traced that P.O. box to a, a, another village on the outskirts of, of Kumasi. Went to go and meet the Imam there. Showed him, you know, he, he asked the Imam to go into his records mm -hmm. and bring out the, marriage yeah. certificates from the, 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 the mm -hmm. mosque. He brings out a marriage certificate. So what my sister found when they got into my dad's house mm -hmm. and they had to use force to enter when he died was a bunch of blank marriage certificates mm -hmm. before blanks of paper with my dad's name mm -hmm. and the woman's name. So, oh no, no, we were already three steps ahead yeah, of him. Yeah. So I had all these blank certificates, but then I had another certificate of two individuals that was not my father and was not Haji Amane. So they were just mimicking they that. They were just mimicking that. Guess what, Ameyao? The guy entered the mosque, he come back me. He come back with the same certificate, you know, the mimic one way I get for my mm -hmm. bag inside. So he bring the thing come no. When Inspector Thompson say, challenge you, bro, come out the one we oh, get yeah. for here. Yeah, come out and we take the two of them. The guy say, hey, how do you have my sister-in-law's marriage certificate in Accra? He say, being with him. That's why we're here. Make a long story short, they knew nothing about it. But obviously, if you have the same copy that mm -hmm. I have, then there's a leak in your mosque. Yeah. In here, so now the leak is in another mosque in the big market in Kumasi that we go to. Mm -hmm. So we end up there, gather everybody around, and finally, somebody knows this woman. What's the story? Apparently, she wanted to go to America. So she came with this man's information to say, I need a marriage certificate for the American embassy. And in Tina, the crest, the coat of arms was there. Yvab. So they put this together for her, for her to use to go to the American embassy. And the minute they heard that she's using it to try and take property, you know, Islam having certain mm -hmm. pillars and certain things that they do not, would not support. Mm -hmm. They all end up saying, oh, we cannot support, support this. this. So right now we did court inside. Right. Um, the next hearing is on May 4th. Right. And right. Uh, right. we're hoping that the judge, uh, I mean, so far the judge is looking at the evidence yes. and she's looking at the other lawyer saying, have you seen this pile of evidence? <laughs> <laughs> Don't come and waste my time. It's a lot.